Hello and welcome to my YouTube channel. I'm going to create a really cute card doing a little bit of watercoloring today using the Band Together stamp set and matching framelits. So what I've got is two pieces of Whisper White, a piece of Rococo Rose and a pair of Pizzazz Base. So on my piece of Whisper White, I'm going to use my embossing buddy because I'm going to do some heat embossing here and I don't want to have any finger marks or any static that might play up with my embossing. Okay, so I've got a scrap piece of paper underneath. I'm going to ink up the large flower stamp here with our Versamark ink. And our Versamark ink is a clear watermark ink that our heat embossing powder is designed to stick to. And when we heat emboss, the powder actually melts into the sticky Versamark ink. So I'm going to turn that over and just at an angle, I'm going to stamp down that beautiful flower image in Versamark. Now you probably won't see this when I lift this up. There is a watermark image. Not sure whether you can see in the light the watermark image that that gives. But what we're going to do is we're going to sprinkle our copper embossing powder over the top of that and you will now see the embossing powder will stick to that sticky ink. Give it a bit of a flick. If there's any extra bits that need a little bit more that you can see, just pop a little bit more on and shake it off. So there you can see the image with the embossing powder on it. Now it's not finished. We need to heat emboss that to actually melt the embossing powder into that ink. So just pop that back into the jar and we will bring in our image. Now this will be a little bit noisy, but I'm gonna bring in the heat gun. We have um, two heat settings on our heat gun. So we have a number one and a number two. For heat embossing, you always use number two, the hottest heat. Wait for your embossing gun to heat up. <clears throat> now it's personal preference here, but I actually heat from underneath. And when the embossing gun gets hot enough, you will see that embossing powder change to copper. Look at that. I never get tired of seeing the heat embossing happen. Now the reason that I do it from underneath is I don't blow around all my embossing powder. So I don't blow off the embossing powder before it, it heats. Um, it's personal preference, but also I find that it, using the heat on your cardstock will curl your cardstock and I like it to be curled that when I go to stick it onto the front of my card that it's curled and warped downwards, not upwards. So it stops the corners of your cards from um, your layers from curling up when you go to adhere it to the front of your card. So you can see that embossing powder change in there and giving us that beautiful creamy embossed image. You can finish it off over the top just to finish it off if you like. Okay, now I'll zoom you in a little bit because I'm gonna do a little bit of watercoloring here. So I have one of our aqua painters. You can purchase these aqua painters. They come in a pack of two, two different sizes. You fill the barrel up with water. Now the inks that I'm using today is going to be Rococo Rose um, and Pool Party as my main two colors, uh, sorry, and Pear Pizzazz. And then I'm gonna bring in the Pool Party at the end, just to show you um, something that gives you a, a, a bit of a finished look. So what I'm going to do is squeeze my ink pads to get a bit of ink from the ink pad into the top of my ink. Do the same with the pear pizzazz because you don't want to put water into directly onto the pad of your ink pad. So what we're going to do is we're going to, with our aqua painter, we're going to pick up a bit of that ink 
and we're going to color the flowers so because we've got the heat embossed you will find that um, the the heat embossing will keep your watercoloring in now because I'm using just plain whisper white you could use watercolor paper here and it probably is more advisable to use watercolor paper it's just that the watercolor paper is not quite white and I wanted it to look um, the layer to look quite white so you just got to remember not to use too much water on um, your normal whisper white cardstock but you can do it on your normal whisper white but um, by choice watercolor cardstock watercolor paper would be much better okay so I'm just going to color that flower I'm now going to come down here and color this one so I'm just putting a layer of that Rococo rose oh and I just went outside my flower petal but that's totally okay because it's watercoloring and watercoloring is meant to be not inside the lines okay so there we have a bit of color on the flower so now I'm going to go back and put some more detail on the flower and you can see with our stamped image you can see that it has areas where you could imagine the, the flower would be the petals would be darker so I'm just going to add a little bit of that in those areas so I'm using full strength here not where I've watered down that ink color I'm actually using the edges here that is full strength color so I'm getting a bit more intense look coming from the inside of those petals okay so just so we can get a little bit of extra color happening on those petals and make it look a little bit more lifelike so just keep adding I'm not actually squeezing my aqua painter. I'm actually just using it, the tip, and um, applying some of that color. I'm gonna come down here and do this one as well. But it's just adding a bit more depth into those petals. And I'll go back through again, spreading it a little bit further. And blending a little bit more but as I said I'm definitely not squeezing my aqua painter come back down to these ones again and add a little bit more color again And then go back and blend through those so it blends out a little bit more on the flower but you can see we've got a nice blended look there on our petals okay so that's looking pretty good so now I'm just going to clean my aqua painter on my chamois I'm going to come back through with the pear pizzazz. So I'm going to add a little bit of water and I'm just going to, with the stems, color the stems in the pear pizzazz. And the beauty, as I said, of watercoloring is you don't have to be perfect. You can color away and you don't actually have to be perfect because after all, it's watercoloring. Just gonna go back in now with the dark a bit, add a little bit more to that leaf. And as you can see, starting to use a little bit too much um, water in here and my Whisper White cardstock is starting to peel a little bit, but that all disappears when you add the heat gun. Okay, so just blend that a little bit more. Okay, I'm pretty happy with that. So now what I'm actually going to do is I'm going to grab my pool party ink. And this is a little trick that just makes your watercolored image pop on your 
cardstock. So I'm going to add a little bit more pool party. This one's a little bit hard to squeeze and get to happen. There we go. So I'm just going to make sure I've got my aqua painter nice and clean. Okay, so I'm just going to go around the outside of the image a couple of millimetres out with my pool party. Just to outline the image. I'm just going to do half of it and then I'm going to go back and blend a little bit. Okay, so I'm just going to, with just plain water now, just blend that. Just so that we get rid of those definite lines. And maybe add a little bit of color so that we start blending out those lines. Blending out to nothing. As I said, just be careful. So now I'm gonna go back in now with my pool party again for the edgy bit. Just back over so that you blend that out full strength again into the edges here and then just blend it out careful not to I just went into my petals there because I'm sitting away from it which makes it harder to see where I'm blending but and blend it out in here again Then we're going to blend it out again. Okay. I'm not happy with that bit over there. It's a bit. That's better. So you can see that has now just outlined my flower and I'm just going to dry that off with the heat gun. And you will see it blends out really, really nicely. pop that aside now and let that dry and then I'm going to bring in my other piece of whisper white that I have here and I'm going to stamp um, the sentiment beautiful inside and out so I'm going to use my embossing buddy once again because I'm going to emboss this okay and I'm going to bring in my scrap piece of paper so we're actually going to stamp with our Versamark ink again. Just making sure I'm in the shot there. Yes, I am. So beautiful inside and out. And I'm also going to stamp some of the leaves that we have in this stamp set. Going to stamp one lot just over to the edge here other one I'm actually going to stamp over the top of the beautiful I know you're thinking wow why would you do that but it works okay so in with our copper embossing powder again shake that off and that looks perfect pop that into our container Bring in our heat gun. Hmm. 
and once again heating from underneath you can see that embossing powder changing in color going nice and smooth and melting into that Versa marking You don't have to move the gun around, just hold it and just follow it around your image. Finish it off on top. And there you have some gorgeous heat embossing once again. So I'm quickly going to bring in my aqua painter and we're going to colour that again. So with our Rococo Rose. Oh, sorry with our pear pizzazz. What am I talking about? Rococo rose. We don't need Rococo rose leaves. We need pear pizzazz leaves. Okay, so with our water aqua painter, make sure it's clean. Just We're going to just colour our leaves with our pear pizzazz. And you'll see you can color that leaf but because it's embossed you can still see our sentiment through that leaf so it looks like our leaf is in behind our sentiment a little bit more dark into there blend that a little bit okay I'm just going to heat that with the heat gun again to Dry that off. Then I'm going to use uh, this beautiful framelit that is in the set, and I'll bring in the framelit so you can see those. So in this set, there is one missing out of the set because I've actually been using it elsewhere. Do I have it here? Yes, there it is. These, this set has some beautiful framelits. These are like a belly band, so you can um, use them as a sentiment label and it cuts like a belly band, so you can have it that it looks like ribbon wrapping around, but we've got some gorgeous sentiment frames. We've got some foliage, some leaves. You can stamp the leaves. And we've got these beautiful wrap around and we've got a leaf as well that we can cut out a beautiful um, filigree leaf which is gorgeous so I'm actually going to use this framelit here and I'm going to cut that out I'll just grab my big shot and bring that in okay I'm going to Zoom back out a bit so you can see. Okay, so I'm just going to sit that on my magnetic platform. Now I want to get most of the, the leaves in this one here. I want to get most of that into that label and that leaf just there. Pop on a cutting pad and run that through. Okay, and then we have our beautiful label, our sentiment label. Okay. So now I'm actually going to use some of this gorgeous Rococo Rose ribbon. And I'm going to bring in that front um, layer again. Now I'm going to layer it up on a Rococo Rose layer and I've got just a sixteenth of an inch border. Now the reason that I want a sixteenth of an inch border, I just want to see a hint of that colour in behind. So because I've actually used the heat gun and because the heat gun warps your cardstock, I always use tear and tape to glue my layers down when you've used heat embossing or dry embossing so that it will actually stick to your next layer nice and flat. So I'm just gonna pop some tear and tape on the back of this layer. 
So out to the edge, making sure you get it out to the edge and along all four edges so that you get it glued down to your layer nicely. Put a piece there and I also pop a piece in the middle as well. Okay, just so it adheres to my layer really, really well. So now just with your pokey tool, taking off the backings, off that double-sided tape. be able to glue that down onto our front layer. Okay, so I'm just going to bring in my Rococo rose and I'm going to layer that up nicely on the front. So that 16th of an inch border all the way around. And my hint when you're using double-sided tape, get your top all lined up knowing that you've got that 16th of an inch border and then it glues down really really well okay hold your fingers underneath it so that you can place it really nicely all right so we have that now I wanted to use this gorgeous ribbon I thought I need to use a Rococo rose ribbon as well so I'm just going to pop some double-sided tape on the back to hold both ends of my ribbon okay so I'm just gonna flip that over pop one there and one piece here. Pokey tool once again. Take off that backing strip. Okay, so I'm just going to pop one end of my Rococo Rose Ribbon in and wrap that around and then glue it back in that side and trim it off. Okay. So now that layer is ready to pop onto my base. So I'm going to bring in my pear pizzazz base. Now my pear pizzazz base is cut at five and three quarter inches this way by eight inches this way. So when you fold it in half, you're going to end up with a card front size, which is um, four inches by five and three quarter inches. So it ends up four inches this way by five and three quarter inches this way. Now my Rococo Rose layer is cut at uh, three and three quarter inches by five and a half inches. This one here, the Whisper White layer, is cut at three and five eighths by five and three eighths, okay? So it's an eighth of an inch smaller than my Rococo Rose layer. So that's how I get that super, super fine layer. So I'm going to pop that up on dimensionals and pop it onto my card base. So like so. Take off those backings. Last one. Okay, so I'm gonna bring in my pear pizzazz base and I'm going to line that up. Now we've got an eighth of an inch border all the way around. Okay, and pop that down, just like so. All right, now with my sentiment, I thought, mm, I'm going to pop a bow over here, but I thought it needed a little bit more oomph behind that. So what I decided to do was bring in our gorgeous rose thread, metallic thread, and I'm going to pop just a piece of double-sided tape, top and bottom of my ribbon here. And this is gonna be hidden behind the sentiment, so it's totally okay. So top and bottom of the ribbon. Take that 
take off those backings. Okay, now with my rose thread, I'm going to wrap it around my fingers several times, probably about eight times, just to get a fair amount of rose thread in behind and snip it. Okay, now what I'm going to do is I'm just going to sit that into my double-sided tape and just stick it into the double-sided tape and arrange it that we have a bit of our rose thread in behind our sentiment layer. Now, the idea is messy is good. Make sure your tails are tucked in. I've got a tail there and I've got another tail there. Make sure the tails get tucked in, but spread it around wherever you like into that double-sided tape because it's all gonna be hidden in behind our sentiment. But as you can see, that creates a little bit more interest in behind that. So I'm now going to pop some dimensionals on the back of my sentiment layer. And take those backings off. Yes, they are. Okay, so I'm just going to pop that up on the front of my card down to the left. Okay, so just like so. And then I'm going to tie a ribbon and pop a bow on. So make a loop and make sure that they're crisscrossed, not even. Make sure you wrap your ribbon around, not twisting it. And then without twisting, you just make a loop and go back through. So just like so. Now you arrange your bow how you want. And I don't want a super big bow, so I want the loops to be quite little. When I get it how I think I want it, I'm then going to pull all four. So the tails and the loops and trim that off. Okay, so I'm happy with that bow and I want that bow to sit in there like that. So I'm just gonna pop a little bit of double-sided tape because this is a pretty bulky bow, so I want it to glue really well onto the front of the card. So I'm just going to grab some double-sided tape. I'm gonna put it half on the ribbon and half not on the ribbon half onto the card front so that it's going to glue really well and we can stick our bow into that so like so which is lovely now we also have some of our faceted dots that are in our in colors and because our rococo rose is one of our in colors so i'm going to grab some of those and pop some of those around on the front of my card so i've got one there I'm gonna take a small one, can be up there, and maybe a medium one could be down here on the front. Okay, so then for the inside, what I wanted to do is bring a little bit of the front of the card to the inside of the card. And I've done that ahead of time so that it would save time because I didn't think you needed to see me watercoloring again. So what I've done is I've taken the smaller flower of the image and just stamped it off onto that corner there. Now there's a sentiment in it. Because we've done beautiful inside and out on the front, I wanted to do this sentiment and I think I'm gonna stamp that in Rococo Rose. It says, so grateful we are friends. So I think this is awesome for a really nice friendship card for someone that's really special in your life. So I'm just going to, so grateful we are friends in Rococo Rose. So as you can see, I've embossed and watercolored on that as well. The Rococo Rose sentiment um, just brings the color of the flower into the card. 
So once again, because that's been heat embossed, I'm actually going to turn it over and put some double-sided tape on the back to glue that into the insert of my card. That one was awfully crooked. I'll turn it sideways so I can do it straight. So along the edges of your card, now we used to have fast fuse. Fast fuse was fantastic for sticking down layers when they'd been um, embossed, but we don't have fast fuse anymore. So double-sided tape is my next best option because it's got a really nice, good, strong um, hold. And that's what you need is something with a nice, good, strong hold that's going to hold that layer nicely on your card because it actually has been heat embossed. We're taking the backings off. Sorry, this video is probably a little bit longer than normal, but with the heat embossing and water coloring, it takes a little bit longer. So I'm then going to pop that into the inside of my card like so. So there you go. Hopefully you enjoyed that. That was my, my sample and that was the one that we've done today. So hopefully you enjoyed this video and please feel free, if this is the first time you've watched my videos, please feel free to hit the subscribe button down in the bottom corner and there's a little bell notification. Make sure that you click that bell notification so you get notified every time I upload a video. So any of the items that I have used in this video today can be purchased through my online store and that can be found down in the bottom in the show more information. Um, you can click on my shop link and go directly to my online shopping page. If you live in Australia, I would love to earn your business. And if your purchases help me do more of these videos. So hopefully you enjoyed that. Anyway, have a great day. Bye for now.